Savadika or WordPress Howdy. <laughs> so it's wonderful to see you here today, especially it's late. Three days of sitting and talking with other people, meeting new people, longtime friends, and maybe already thinking about going home. And with all the good reasons not to, you show up at this talk. So I'm delighted to have you here and uh, to tell you about my journey of the no-code contributor to the WordPress Gutenberg <coughs> GitHub repo. And I'm here to tell you, you don't have to be a developer to contribute to WordPress and have an impact. So show of hands, who in the room has contributed to WordPress either on Friday? Why? Excellent. Well, thank you. Um, so which team? Meta. Yeah, just shout it out. All right. Hosting, yes. Awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> so, and that's also part of the contributor journey to open source projects. There are a lot of reasons not to. And still thousands of people <coughs> all over the world, after a hard day's work on the weekends, volunteer their time to make WordPress a better software and the internet a place for all people. So why contribute? Well, each of us, and if you were here for Harry's talk, um, there were other business reasons as well, but each of us has their own reasons. Some of us uh, scratch their personal itch. They see something they can make better, and they do it. Um, for others, it's the community to belong to, and that's a wonderful community to belong to. And uh, for others, it's to imp um, there are good business cases as well um, to be on the pulse of creation, to be um, also have influence in direction, but you need to be at there uh, at the same time. Uh, and for others, it's a way of giving back after building a business or a life. Um, on WordPress and standing on the shoulders, shoulders of giants. So, um, did you know that one make, on make.wordpress.org there are 21 themes? <coughs> no, teams, not themes, teams. <laughs> uh, and they have their websites there with their contributor handbook and everything. So, but not all teams contribute code. The marketing team, documentation team, community team, are just a few examples. And then there are teams who contribute code that can still uh, need help of non-contributors to um, being project managers, being meeting facilitators, to test things, and to do bug reports um, for the system. So it's about the Gutenberg repo. So what is Gutenberg? Uh, confuses a few people. Um, often we are also at the, in the project. We are not very concise in how we define Gutenberg. Um, first of all, it's the name of the feature plugin that is the beta plugin for the new features on the block editor and site editors. Um, and people install the plugin, provide feedback, test things, and build things. But for every WordPress, Major release, um, the features added to the plugin between last release and this release um, get merged into core. And then it becomes the block editor, the site editor, and blocks. So, and how that works for the core editor team um, is what we're talking here. So, examples for WordPress 6.2, um, it will come out on March 28th. It's now in beta 2. Beta 3 comes out on, uh, on Tuesday. Um, we will have the features introduced in the Gutenberg plugin from 14.1 or 14.2 to 15.1. And um, the Gutenberg plugin code is, you guessed it, in a GitHub repo. So, what are GitHub and uh, what is Git and GitHub? Just uh, briefly, Git is the version control system invented by the same guy who brought us Linux, Linus Torvaldsen. 
And um, it's a distributed version control system for tracking changes in source code for software development. GitHub is the software as a service kind of website. It's um, the social network of developers and those who build the software. Um, it, was, um, it also has some, some great tools for project management, um, project boards, and also for private and um, public repos for companies as well. So it's a, um, um, and it was bought by Microsoft a few years ago. So GitHub can be intimidating for non-developers at first, very, so much so. And it has uh, some very powerful tools. So I started my first bug report in 2018, and now I probably check its notifications more often than Twitter or email. Um, GitHub is also async, so you don't have to be there all day, every day. This is particularly important for a worldwide project like WordPress, because with the time zones, of course, more and more WordPress and more and more WordPress teams actually uh, will um, or use GitHub also to their non-code organization of their work. Um, Documentation comes to mind, and also um, the community team had just a proposal posted about uh, changing their workflows to GitHub. So it's not a wasted skill <laughs> when you start now with, your, uh, with GitHub. So the session promised you a case study on no-code contribution, so let's look at um, things. But uh, before we dive really in, I just want to put that out if you want to be um, see what it's all about, and um, the core editor meeting, that's the, where the team meets, is on Wednesdays, 1400 UTC, which is 2100 in the uh, China team, I think. Um, just correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> time zone really um, yeah, confused me more than I like to admit. <laughs> um, and apart from the meetings, most time, Gutenberg developers are on GitHub. So what to do? What do I do when I go uh, on, on GitHub? Before you do that, um, just a rundown. You need a WordPress.org account. You need a GitHub account. You create a WordPress Slack account. And then connect your uh, WordPress.org account with your GitHub account. These are the four steps before you even start just because then you want to be, uh, you get into Slack and you get your contributions to GitHub registered on the profile of your WordPress.org account. Um, I don't contribute code to the project. I'm a terrible PHP developer and my JavaScript knowledge is improving, but it's certainly not up to the level that I can build software for millions and millions of people. Um, and you definitely don't want me to. <laughs> um, but I use the block editor a lot. Uh, Leslie told you about uh, Gutenberg Times. The Gutenberg Times is the production test site for the Gutenberg plugin. Um, and when I uh, see bugs, I, I create issues. I create issues, but I also create issues. Well, I mentioned the bugs and annoyances and also inconsistencies, yeah. Um, but I also uh, create issues when I test new features for an article or so. Um, I test re release candidates uh, for the plugin um, uh, release. And I also create issues when I think about feature improvement because I have opinions, yeah. And that's okay to have opinions, especially on GitHub because it informs everybody. And this is another aspect, so we need the... So, uh, when I run into bug and annoyances, um, I, uh, I have an example for you for each of the four items, so just to see how it all kind of comes together, how the engagement is, and uh, what is all to... Uh, what's happening when you um, create an issue. So, um, so the first one is uh, I had the <laughs> idea that um, 
There you see, these are early, <laughs> early work. That's Gutenberg 3.01, and that was in June. And I had a, I had the a habit, or I still have the habit, that I create my list, write all the paragraphs, yeah, and then I select everything and then convert it to list. And back then, the list conversion was in the toolbar, and all of a sudden, I couldn't find it anymore. Uh, and so I said, well, that's a bug. Yeah? If you have a, a new release and the, the features are not there where you expect them to be, just can't, that can't be right, um, I thought. And um, Matthias Ventura, um, the spark of Gutenberg, so to speak, um, he uh, told me that, well, we moved it uh, into the transform section. And so I was okay. Uh, yeah, that was okay, but it also... Um, I, I, I didn't know how, how I should feel about that. Yeah? What, should I be embarrassed because I didn't know that? Yeah? Is it a user kind of thing? And it's all that, but you, you get over that embarrassment and then you learn about two things. One is um, read a little bit more about what the feature is, but also it in, uh, informs the designers that they made a decision that where the user ne not necessarily follows them. And that is, an, is a good data to have for designers and developers. So don't be shy and think, oh, if I, uh, if, uh, th they should, yeah, if I find something uh, wrong, it's me or, and not the developers. I think that's kind of a shift that you get when you do it um, a little more often. Um, so the next example what I have is test a new feature. Um, and uh, that looked at the, like this. So I had a, I encountered a new feature, but when I um, added to a widget, there was a calendar widget to the widget screen. I get a, a list of error messages in my uh, browser. So I've, I uh, copied the error message here as well. And then uh, something happened. I uh, labeled it as a bug. And then uh, one developer was able to reproduce it uh, pretty much the same day. So it was tested. It was not just my imagination, my system, my uh, anything. And then uh, three months later, Robert Anderson uh, came in and said, well, I can still produce it, so it hasn't been fixed. And, and then uh, a month later, six weeks later, um, a developer came in. Oh, finally, that is fixed, so we can close the issue. So uh, that's a... a, a Quite th that could be a journey of a, uh, an issue um, that you file, um, especially when you have new features that don't work and um, they fix it. Uh, so for release candidates um, in Gutenberg, I n normally just do smoke test. What is a smoke test? I, I install it and see if something breaks. Uh, smoke comes out of my computer, <laughs> it just literally. <laughs> and um, it is uh, uh, something that is very helpful, especially when um, a release is not yet done. Um, so I had this warning as immediately when I um, activated the plugin from the release candidate file. And then um, this is, uh, and, and one of the developers came in and said, okay, this is probably uh, re a result from a, a commit um, or a, a code change. And then there was, it was labeled uh, for the release, do not punt, means uh, you can't release without having this fixed. Uh, and so um, we got uh, that fixed before the 7.3 came out. Um, uh, that's another uh, journey of that. Um, and the last one is feature improvements. Um, that uh, issue was something that, uh, with a classic editor, when we wanted to see the code of the post, you uh, changed over to the code editor. Um, and I realized uh, with the blog editor, I don't want to have the full page in code editor. I just want to fiddle with the HTML of a certain block. So I was wondering if that could be um, a menu item, or so a shortcut to switch to the HTML editing on block level. And um, so I, I even had a little um, 
mock-up of the design where it should go. Um, and then uh, uh, quite a few people chimed in that might is a, that's a cool idea. Um, or I agree, this is going to be a much more effective one. And then there were developers who tried to uh, tried their uh, hands on it uh, to fix it. And um, there were actually two. So sometimes even when you have a good idea or a good feature, it still takes a developer to pick up on that and follow through um, in, in an implementation. So uh, it can certainly be a while. So um, I filed this when, you go, when I go back. I filed this in 18. And the last developer uh, still tried to fix it in, uh, um, in 2022. Um, so we are not there yet. <laughs> but that can happen. Yeah? Not everything that you suggest will, will be followed through. Um, but it, uh, it's important to have the conversation to bring uh, the opinions um, into the fold. So, um, and now it's your turn how to create an issue. Um, but before you create an issue, there is a, it's a two, uh, three things. One is isolate the issue to the core block editor or the Gutenberg plugin. If you test it on a site that has other plugins installed, there might be a plugin conflict that is not a result from the um, editor, but from a plugin conflict that uh, shouldn't be in this unless you can isolate which uh, plugin that is. Search the existing issues for uh, a similar um, uh, issue with labels and keywords. Um, very often, I, I don't find an issue, I file it, and then three days later, I said, somebody closes it because said, okay, this is a duplicate of this issue, which had a total different title or a total different entry, but the effect for the developer was it's the same package, so they uh, label it as a, um, a duplicate. And then um, make sure that you follow the use of the bug report issue template. Uh, and what does that look like? So you go to the uh, GitHub repo and um, click on new issue and you get four, four choices. One is a bug report, one is a bug report for mobile, <coughs> uh, then a feature request that has a different template, and then a report of security vulnerability that shouldn't be in, um, shouldn't be in the GitHub repo. Uh, there's a, best, uh, a better, um, Oops, a better place for that. That's where we are. Okay, hang on. So when I go up here, so the new issue template comes with a give it a title. So um, that's very descriptive. Then make a, an effort to describe what what you tried to do, what you did, and what you expected to happen, and what did happen. Um, and then uh, the, the most important part is and these, the series of steps to reproduce the issue, uh, to reproduce the, um, the bug or something like that, because that's how other people in the, uh, on the project can then uh, double check um, how that uh, can be fixed. Um, and then when you have screen recordings or screenshots or code snippet, that's definitely helping. And the other important if you issue uh, uh, part is also the environment. Make sure you uh, mention which WordPress version you're using, which Gutenberg plugin version you're using, and if it's a browser issue, also the browser version. Most of things can be browser issues. And then also just the two check marks down here. Um, select and please confirm you search the existing issues. Uh, for duplicate, and then please confirm that you have tested with all plugins deactivated, just to remind you again. Um, and that's um, how you follow the, um, the template. Uh, description, step to replicate, screenshots or screencasts, expected behavior, and then environment information. Because given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. The more people 
uh, testings. Um, so that's a quote by Eric S. Raymond in the Cathedral uh, and the Bazaar um, book of 1999. Um, some of it is still valid, especially this uh, quote. Um, it's also called um, the, the Linus Law uh, in uh, honor of uh, Linus Torvaldsen, the um, creator of Git and Linux. So if you want to be um, part of the WordPress 6.2, um, you could also help test the beta versions that come out. Um, there, there is a make blog on the test team um, <clears throat> that outlines the instructions on how to set up a local system, um, the list of features that need to be tested, and also a workflow for the testing and where you can report those tests. That would be, and that is really helpful for, um, we have that, oops, do I have it here? No, I don't have it here. Um, so um, that would be uh, really good. Uh, we, we can always help have more testers on uh, 6.2. It comes out, the beta 3 comes out on Tuesday, then we have the release candidate the week later, and then the final release in March 28th. That's the schedule for now. Um, if, you, if you don't want to rush into this right now, <laughs> what comes next with the uh, with the repo, if you kind of are comfortable, or if you don't have any issue yet to solve, um, go to the needs testing label. Um, so every issue that is not clear gets a label that says needs testing. And right now we have 22 open uh, issues that have that label. So um, that's also how you learn um, to write good uh, step to reproduce instructions when you follow other people's steps to reproduce the error. So you can go in and say, okay, so the navigation block custom menu not imported. Um, and you click on this. Um, so here's the description and then somebody else. And here are the steps to, um, to reproduce. Yeah, that could be one. Or you could also say, um, Gallery block doesn't respect option of opting out of base layout styles. That's something for the developers more. Um, so yeah, pick an issue that uh, seems to be uh, clear for you. Um, or you can participate in discussions, join the triage team. Um, if you want to do um, need some toolbox, uh, I have four suggestions. One is the health check troubleshooting uh, plugin, the WordPress beta tester plugin, the core rollback plugin and the Gutenberg Nightly, which is a almost daily um, plugin, copy of the Gutenberg plugin um, that you can uh, install on your system and you get the latest uh, trunk version, the latest uh, merged features. Um, sometimes it, it was um, born out of the necessity that people, um, that when I created issue, there was a time I created an issue and then uh, a developer saw it and said, oh, I think that was fixed in uh, two days before, but the, there wasn't a plugin release uh, for that, so I could have saved myself and the de developer quite some time. So um, there is the Gutenberg Nightly um, available um, to, uh, that you can download here. And it, um, you can actually update it as well. Oops. So that's it. As, is, as I said, you don't have to be a developer to contribute to WordPress to have an impact. So now you have another option, option to do that. Um, I'll be happy to guide anybody to, through the process. Um, I'm on WP Slack as uh, uh, at BPH. Also on Twitter, DMs are open, private messages are open. You can follow also Twitter Gutenberg Times on the YouTube channel and subscribe to the weekend edition. And the slides are, yeah, you can not see that in this one, but up here, that's the link to the slides. That's it for, for me today. Um, I hope uh, I inspired you a little bit to get your hands uh, dirty on a GitHub 
uh, repo. Even if you don't do uh, code, you can help developers quite a bit in uh, testing and uh, sharing your opinions. Thank you so much.